Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial with Roaring Records. Today is one of my favorite tutorials. This is um, this changed my life when I started thinking about logic and how to perform stuff. And today we're going to talk about chord triggers. Chord triggers can only happen with software instruments. So if you press your little add a track button, you're looking at adding a software instrument. We're going to deal with the classic electric piano today um, just because it's a standard go-to. So, um, you know, a chord is like a collection of notes. You might have something like a C chord. You might have something like an F chord or a G chord or an A minor chord. All those things. Um, but if you're not a fairly proficient piano player, and I myself am not, then sometimes it can get really tricky to play a bunch of chords like that. And maybe you just want more notes in a chord than you have fingers for. So today we're going to attempt to solve that problem using the MIDI effects category. Now if you can't see your track inspector, it is important at this time that you make sure it is visible because you are going to need to access your MIDI effects dialog and this time the chord trigger. So this is what the chord trigger looks like. And let me explain. You've got an input line. That's what key you press on the keyboard. You have an output line. That's what Logic decides to do with it. So through the beauty of MIDI language, I can press one note, let's say a C here, and have a magical four notes show up each time I press one. So I'm only pressing, you can see down here on my screen, one note, the C note, and I'm having a C minor minor seven chord populate. Now this is the default. You can play some pretty cool progressions like this. Yeah, that's fun. That's easy. I dig it. But it's not exactly what I want to use for my own song creations. So let's see. What if I wanted to set it to a lot of different chords? Well, here's multi mode. Boom. Now I've triggered over to multi mode. Now I have two different types of chords. I've got a lovely A major chord and a B diminished chord. Those are radically different. And let's see, what if I want to teach it my own stuff? Oh, here we go, the learn button. So there are three ways that we can trigger information to happen here with the learn button. The first one is just by mouse. So I could go C, now I've clicked on C, it's recording. You know, anytime you get a red dot in Logic, that means you're recording something. So now I'm gonna record some output. Now, I've told it that my C3 button is going to perform a C major chord, and I could do the next note. A D minor chord, a 2 chord in the key of C. So, that's one way I could teach it. Another way is I can do it all by finger placement on the piano. So now I'm going to single hit an E. That tells me now that E is the note I want to record on, and then play the E chord. Same thing for F. So now I've created um, the E and the F chord. So that's especially useful telling it which one you're going to record on first if you're going to use some funky or not root position chord. However, if you're doing a root position chord, all you really have to do is play the root position chords. Logic is automatically picking the root of each of those chords um, to be the trigger note. So now I'm going to take it out of learn mode. Here we go. So now I have two octaves worth of diatonic C major chords. Hey, if you ever wanted to be the guy that could play, um, 
Oh, what's the name? Lean on me. That song. The chord progression is one, two, three, four. Yeah, there you go. Lean on me. All played with one finger. So that's pretty cool. Now, what if I want to be able to use that on other instruments? Well, the second I change the instrument, this all goes away. Unless I come up here and go to File Default, Save As, and now I can title my chord trigger. This is just so happens to be what I'll remember it as, and then hit Save. And now every time I come back, I can just drop down from up here and select Diatonic Chords in C and be able to access my little chord chart here. Now, that's all well and good. I'm going to recall the default just a second. Go back into multi. What if I want to do some just ridiculous stuff? Well, I could hit learn and let's do, uh, let's actually switch instruments for a second. Let's come up here and let's go into the orchestral brass, full brass. We're just going to get gritty here. Just, I mean, really John Williams esque. Now we're going to come into multi-mode and clear these out. I'm just going to go over the top for a second. So when I hit this C chord, what I want to have happen is... So that big chord there. And then let's teach it something else. Let's see... So now I've got two trigger chords here and here. Very easy. Very easy to bounce back and forth with. Um, again, you could save those chords, do whatever you want to. But that is the chord trigger in a nutshell. Now go forth and get crazy making your own chord triggers check out the next video if you want to see how to uh, manipulate these chords even more with the arpeggiator